Andrew Brown will now present his senior speech. Yeah. Andrew is a son of Ashley Brown, and he will be attending Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Prescott, Arizona next fall, majoring in aeronautical science. Everybody, Andrew. Good morning. Classmates, the day we have all been waiting for has finally come. Today is the last day that you will have the privilege of making new memories in this building. The time you have spent here is now in the past and all that is left to do is look back. Although our time here may be over, there is still much to reflect on what you have just accomplished. The experiences we have had over this tiny part of our lives are going to shape us as people forever. When I entered Blue Valley North almost four years ago, I was lucky. I had an older brother who was a senior at the time and who helped guide me through my freshman year. I remember he would always tell me stories about how challenging classes like AP Gov and AP Calc were going to be, and although he didn't intend to, he planted the idea in my mind that AP Euro would be far more like graduate level lectures than Mr. Cordell's eighth grade social studies class. Now I can't speak for everyone, but I think many of us felt that way because Although we had no idea what these scary new classes were actually going to be like, we still had established clear expectations in our minds for them. Personally, I expected to fail in higher level classes and I avoided challenging myself. When I decided to make a change to harder level classes, I faced one of the toughest academic hardships I've ever had to go through. Looking back, it almost seems that when we expected classes to be easy, they quickly destroyed our lives and when we expected classes to be impossible, they became our favorites. Outside of school, many of us had our first jobs sometime during the course of the last four years, and I'm no different. I hated my first job, but I was lucky enough to find a replacement that I really enjoy. It started as I was going into junior year when I discovered a passion for the game of soccer. I was already at the age of 16, so I decided that playing was not very realistic, and I decided that instead I would become a referee. When I got my first game assignments in March of that year, I expected to be excellent at the job, I did, as I had spent the past months becoming an expert on soccer refereeing via the internet. <laughs> I can confidently say that I was, I was very wrong and I was terrible. I recall my first match as a center referee led to dozens of parents, coaches, and players screaming in my face and I truly remember a brief moment when I thought that I would not come home alive. <laughs> I'm happy to say that I did end up coming home alive and I did end up getting much better at the job. However, I'd be lying if I said that there was not a brief moment when I truly contemplated giving up just because of how wrong I was about how I expected to perform. Throughout our education, we have been taught to set goals for ourselves, and for me, goal setting has become an important part of what motivates me. Some of you may know that aviation is a big part of my life, and I've wanted to be a pilot since I was in the first grade. I've been flying since I was in eighth grade, and I set a goal for myself to complete my full private pilot's license by the minimum age of 17, and I fully expected to reach that goal. When circumstances led to me missing it, I became extremely unmotivated toward achieving a dream I had had since I was a kid. And I'm happy to say that I'm much more motivated and I'm excited to pursue my dream in the future, but I am still slightly disappointed that I'm over a year late to my original expectation. However, even though things didn't play out how I wanted them to, I'm okay with the way that my journey has played out. Just in case you haven't realized what my point is here, it's that expectations can be dangerous and more often they can be wrong. I've expected a lot of things to happen that did not, and I've experienced a lot of things that I did not expect. Some of my most painful memories in my education have been, being, have been because I was wrong about an expectation and I beat myself up because I was wrong. However, if you ask me if I could go back and change my expectations or change the way things played out, I would absolutely say no. Expectations are a natural and important part of life. My experiences and disappointments have crafted me into the person that I am today. I've been wrong about nearly every expectation I've ever had, but I've ended up taking way more than I ever could have imagined from the very experiences that I was wrong about. Expectations are a double-edged sword. They can teach you an important lesson, or they can diminish your will to work for something that is important for you. As we sit here today, we face hundreds of experiences that we do not yet know the outcome of. Whether you're going to college, taking a gap year, serving our country, or going straight into the workforce, you may not know what the future looks like, but you almost certainly have an expectation for it. As you face new challenges in life, remember all the challenges that you faced while you were here. Remember how wrong you were about what you expected, 
And most importantly, remember what you learned just because your expectation was wrong. You must keep expecting because you cannot stop learning. Use expectations for good. Let them help you and never let them bring you down just because you were wrong. After all, if we are never wrong, how are we ever supposed to learn? Class of 2019, thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you, Drew.